physically, we should think of the Bohr model as predicting a set of energy levels. So the vertical axis represents energies allowed for electrons. The Bohr model suggests that there's a sequence of allowed locations that get successively closer just as 1 over n squared gets closer and closer to 0. And then the reason we see the characteristic pattern of the Balmer series is because there are transitions that involve dropping electrons originally sitting up here at n equals 3 and dropping down to n equals 2. Or there are electron transitions from n equals 4 dropping down to n equals 2 or there are atoms in which the electron is sitting out here at n equals 5 and dropping down to n equals 2. And the sequence just keeps on going. That would be the Bohr model interpretation of what is the Balmer series. The Lyman series which we'll recall is that series in which the final resting place of the, of the electron is not the n equals 2 location but the n equals 1, consists of a sequence of transitions where either the electron starts out here at n equals 2 and drops down to n equals 1, or it drop, starts at n equals 3 and drops down to n equals 1, or the electron starts out at n equals 4 or n equals 5, and so on. That would be the Lyman series, which had an n naught 1. The Balmer series, of course, with n naught is 2. So in this way, the Bohr model is a very intuitive picture with a nucleus plus ZE in its center and a set of allowed orbits at successively larger and larger radii which can be indexed with this number n going further and further out.